Percy Jackson and the Olympians didn't just become a success overnight as the cast had to follow some very strict rules, which helped the show to come out better than the movie adaptations. Getting the proper TV adaptation of Percy Jackson and the Olympians started right from applying rules to the audition process for the cast. And the first rule was mainly used to choose the best actor to portray Percy Jackson. However, this was straightforward and it was said that whoever would get to play Percy must be funny. Walker already knew about this rule because he's very familiar with the source material and understood only someone who can be as amusing as Percy would get picked. He had read the books multiple times and had collected many Percy Jackson items to feel closer to the franchise. And he continued by explaining how it was easy for him to obey this rule when he said, I think a sense of humor came naturally to me because I feel like we have a similar sense of humor. Even though he met one of the basic requirements to get the role, Walker revealed that the audition process took a long time, but his sense of humor later made way for him, and the book's author, Rick Reardon, was so happy to see Walker's audition tape because it was really funny and he immediately knew he had found the right person. As soon as the role of Percy was cast, another strict rule for Walker was to work along with the casting directors to choose the best cast for the roles of Grover and Annabeth, and that meant he had to be available to do chemistry readings with everyone trying to get the things right. So in this case, the number of the actors auditioning was brought down to 11 and Walker was made to have three chemistry readings with each of the actors, Arian Samadri, who later got to win the role of Grover, mentioned that he felt pity for Walker due to how hard he had to work. Arian said he was very clearly exhausted. There were multiple Grovers at the chemistry read. And so James Bobin, the director of the first couple episodes, was like, all right, let's move on to the next. And Walker was just like, that wasn't it, there's more. I felt so bad. The same was also done with the role of Annabeth, which later went to Leah Sava Jeffries, but Walker added that he knew that Leah would get the role during their chemistry read. Although the whole process was tiring, Walker confessed that he enjoyed it because it allowed him to hang out with Rick all day. Another essential rule was that Walker had to become a skilled swordsman. But the crazy thing is, Walker was so eager to learn how to use the sword that he became even better than they expected. According to Rick, Walker was already perfect with swordplay to a level his character couldn't reach yet. So he had to tone down his skills and play badly to reflect Percy's capacity. Rick explained how easy it was for Walker to follow the rule of being a skilled fighter when he said, that's because Walker's just an incredible perfectionist and he wanted it to be so good that he spent a lot of time with his sword. Aside from learning to use the sword, the cast also had a compulsory rule where they had to adjust and endure the weather conditions at the filming location. Percy Jackson was shot in Vancouver during the summer, which was very hot and uncomfortable. The cast was subjected to extreme heat as they mostly wore armor and other heavy costumes that made the hot temperature feel even worse. It was even more intense when they were shooting the capture the flag scene and they had no choice but to endure. Speaking about how tough it was to follow this rule of endurance, Leah said, that day, it was so hot and I had all that dark armor on me, and then, on top of that, a spider actually crawled up inside of my armor. It literally looked like a poisonous spider. It was big and black. I felt something tickling me, and I looked down as its head was going right up into my arm guard. That was really bad. Just like Walker had to master using the sword, Arian also had a necessary rule to follow in successfully playing Grover. For someone whose character is half goat and half human, Arian was made to work hand in hand with the costume and makeup department to get into his character. The actor mentioned that his first task was to figure out the best ear and horn for Grover, and he added that the showrunner, Dan Schatz, was bringing in different types for him to choose from. However, selecting the horn and ears was the easiest part of following this rule, according to Arian. He said, Every day I spent 45 minutes in the makeup chair just getting those glued on. I'd go to sleep with them, shower with them. So while Walker and Leah were learning the stunts for their performance in the show, Grover was learning to walk like a goat for many hours and he was always tiptoeing on set. It got to a stage where he mastered the act so much that he would continue to walk like that even when he wasn't on set. Arian recalled that on many occasions, he would go out with Leah and Walker who would remind him to put his foot down as the rule only applies to the set. But even after filming wrapped, the actor still finds it hard not to walk like Grover. He said, Walking normally after 10 months of walking on the ball of my foot felt unnatural. I had to consciously put my heel down to the ground. Despite how Arian's movement was affected by the rule, he's glad he was guided by it because it helped build his character emotionally and physically on set. 
Interestingly, Arian wasn't the only one who had to follow a strict rule until he got used to it. Walker was also mandated to learn to stay long underwater. Although Walker knew that Percy had to come in contact with water a lot, he didn't fully grasp the extent to which he would be required to go through it until he got to set and had to start training. The actor said, There were a lot of wetsuits and gear to keep me cold from being wet, and I don't think I understood how much I would be wet throughout the series. Even when he didn't have to go underwater, Walker was always finding himself in cold situations that could be from rain, water puddles, and splashes. So following this rule required that he be trained professionally, which was provided for him on set. His training and how fast he learned helped him get good at it till he got his junior diver's license. Right from the beginning of the series, Annabeth being very angry at Percy is one of the fun things to see. However, even though it's part of the script, it was also a rule that Leah remained constantly angry at Walker to help her stay in character. Leah revealed how the rule was enforced on set, saying, Sometimes they'd be like, I want you to act like you're very annoyed of Percy, which was super easy actually, so that was the least challenging, you know what I mean? So on and off set, the cast confirmed that Annabeth was rarely pleasant to Percy, as it was effortless for Leah to just be angry at Walker for no reason. Another rule on the set of Percy Jackson and the Olympians was for the cast to only base their research on the books and not the past movies in the franchise. This rule was to give the young three cast the chance to make the characters their own thing and have the show turn out as a perfect adaptation. So Rick wanted to ensure that the series gave the franchise a fresh start and not be disappointing like the movies. And because of this, the young cast couldn't get the necessary advice from the original actors that could help them. They were forbidden from taking any character tips from the movies and Rick ensured that by keeping the old cast separated from the new. Arianne, who plays Grover, mentioned that he didn't hear from Brandon T. Jackson, who portrayed the role in the movie. However, he got support from Logan Lerman, who played Percy in the films, as they both follow each other on Instagram. Logan has also openly supported the cast and praised Walker, too. Even Annabeth's former cast, Alexandra Daddario, encouraged Leah's casting. But according to the rule, that's all the new cast can get from the older ones, as they aren't allowed to take from the past versions of the characters, but to form theirs. Despite the series being made of a very young main cast, Rick mentioned that it was a rule on set for them to be able to maintain professionalism, but he was shocked when he met the cast because he didn't even have to enforce the rule as they knew what they were doing. While acknowledging how easily the cast followed this rule, Rick said, it's a lot to put on the shoulders of any 12 year old or 14 year old to ask them to carry a show. One of our directors, Anders Engstrom, worked with the kids for the first day and he was so impressed. The director turned to me and said, it's so nice to work with adults for a change because these kids were just so, so great. So Walker, Leah, and Arian were all so focused even more than some adults would act at times. And Rick added that he became more drawn to the cast for their professionalism as they all followed the rules he laid on set conveniently. Which of these rules do you find the most challenging for the cast of Percy Jackson and the Olympians? Share your thoughts in the comments and thanks for watching.